Hi everyone, thank you for tuning in to Pace Yourself. Today we're going to be talking about moving from a workflow rule to a flow. So the use case today is a workflow rule that actually sends an email alert. So it's pretty simple. The rule criteria is once the status of our campaign member equals confirmed, this will trigger our workflow action, which is an email alert. The evaluation criteria is every time it's created to subsequently meet our criteria that we just went through. So as we know, workflow rules are being retired and they're super simple to set up, but they do have some limitations that now flow opens us up to the possibilities of creating new records, um, updating related objects, doing a whole bunch more that we need to now move from workflow rules to flow. So let's go ahead and replicate this, this exact use case. So once the status changes, it sends an email. So we're going to go ahead and find our flow by typing into our quick find box, opening up our flow page. On the right hand side, we're going to click new flow. So the flow type we want to replace our workflow rule is actually the record triggered flow because it's based off a field change on that on that record. Go ahead and click create. And we're going to start and work down our list, similar to how your workflow rules took you through the steps, just working from the top to the bottom. So this one here is asking me what object do I want to trigger it off, which is campaign member. I want to trigger the same as before, a record is created and updated. And we, same as before, get to set our entry criteria. Status equals confirmed. So the next option we get to choose from, every time a record is updated and meets the criteria, or only when the record is updated to meet the criteria, which is exactly the one we want. We don't want it to fire every single time a different field is updated, but the status is still confirmed. We only want it to do it when the status is changed to confirmed. So optimize for flow. This is just the next difference from workflow rules. On the left, you're actually able to run something before the save functionality of that record. So things like updating fields is pretty quick for it to do. So it'll enhance your performance if you do this one before save. But if you're trying to do anything to a related record or actions, you choose the one on the right, which is exactly the one we're doing, like sending an email. Gives you the example right there. Go ahead and click done. Perfect. So now we've started our flow and we've entered into the next phase, which is what do you want it to do? So our workflow rule was actually triggering a email alert. So on our plus button here, it's got add element, which is what it's called. We're going to go ahead and add our element, which is send an email alert. It's actually got it up here in the shortcut section. So I'm going to go ahead and click that. When you click under action into the field, it creates a drop down of all your email actions, all your email alerts, sorry, in your system. So this one here is our campaign registration confirmation email. It then comes up with the label. This is referring to what do we call this action on this flow? It's not referenced anywhere else. It's just saying, if you're going to use this action again, we need to differentiate between the two. So this one, we're going to call it the exactly the same as what the email is doing. That's how I like to use it. Description is obviously you can write more information. Now set input values, the record ID. So this is asking you, what record does the email alert reference when it is triggered? So it's the one, it's the campaign member that entered this flow is what we have to reference. So we go to campaign member, we link through and we find the ID, campaign member ID. So now the email alert will be referenced according to the values and the related values of this campaign member. Go ahead and click done. So now we have built the exact same thing as our email alert workflow rule. I'm going to go ahead and click save. And I can run this one now and click activated and it will perform exactly the same as the workflow rule previously. 
but I want to give you an idea about how much more functionality we can add when it's in flow. So at the moment, if you send an email alert from Salesforce, it doesn't actually get recorded on the contact profile that this email was sent. So we're going to go one step further with this one and just add that reference that the email was even sent. So after our email alert was sent, we're going to add another element. So using the plus in a circle. And that element is actually going to be an action. So I'm going to, this is an action performed outside the flow. And the action I want to add is a task. Now I'm choosing task because these show up in your activity timeline on the right hand side of most contact pages. So a task is often created when an email is sent from the normal email section on the quick actions on the right hand side of a contact profile page. So we're going to have to replicate something similar. So I'm going to actually create an action that just quickly references what happened on this flow. So down the bottom, I've got new task and it's a quick action new task, which tells me it mimics the same functionality as if I had clicked the button new task. So again, it's just asking us for a label. It's just referencing this particular flow element, just in case we add another action that's new task. So all of these input values are the fields that you're given when you click new task on a normal contact page. And these are dictated by your global layouts. So assigned to ID is who's the owner of the task. And I'm going to quickly just use the campaigns owner. So the due date, I want to make sure it has signed off. It's done. It doesn't come up in your to do list. So I've only got day, month, year, year, year as options. So it's asking for only a, a date, but actually I want to reference something in the system. So I want to reference the day this flow happened. And so just like in process builder, you can click through to all of these things and get more fields. And I'm going to use the one for flow and I'm going to use the date field current date. So it's going to write the date the flow actually was activated for this particular contact. The name ID is actually the contact you want to record this task on. So who is the email we sent it to? And we know how to get there because it's the campaign member that entered this flow the contact related and that ID related record ID related to ID references any other object you want to link this task to. And I am actually going to link this task to the campaign that this member is part of. So I'm going to go to the campaign member again, click through, find the related campaign and then get that ID. So the status is a pick this field normally, but in flow, it doesn't give me those options. So I have to actually type in the text value of that pick list that I wanted to reference the subject. I like to use a email sent in the start. So that's what shows up when you first see it on the activity timeline. And then I'd like to use the exact subject line of the email that was sent. And the type is a pick list field again, but because it doesn't show me, I know the field label value is email and I go ahead and click done. So I save that one. And now what's happened is we actually have one extra step further than our workflow rule was able to do for us last time. So now it's actually more helpful than before. So I show you what that actually looks like in real life. So I'm going to go ahead and click activate. And in my campaign member, I'm going to just refresh it to be safe. And I'm going to change the status because remember that's our entry criteria to the confirmed status. Click save. So now you can see that the confirmation status is now confirmed after changing that. And we're going to go to our contact profile to check if that email task was created which you can see here on the right hand side, the activity, the task registration confirmation campaign was created on our contact profile. So that's exactly what we wanted to do. So not only have we upgraded our workflow rule 
to a flow, we've actually added the ability to now reference that on the contact profile we sent the email to. Thank you for tuning in, everyone. This has been Pace Yourself with me, Pacey.